I have the honor to present the next speaker, Professor Dr. Hisham El Sayed from Swiss Canal University, uh, discussing the effect of tranexamic acid on death, vascular occlusion, and blood transfusion in trauma patients. I know this was a big project with, uh, with the results very, very significant. Yes. 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 This is a great, uh, great job. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I hope that you are not uh, hypoglycemic yet. You are. Okay. So I have to be very short as much as I can. Anyway, <laughs> I mean, you are not going to have any dinner uh, till 6 o'clock. So <laughs> you have to bear with me. Anyway, I mean, I'm first, you know, dear chair ladies and chairman, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very, yeah, I mean, there are always ladies around. <laughs> uh, in pediatrics, we are a minority. And I think now in medicine, we are a minority. And ladies and gentlemen, I mean, I'm, I'm honored really to present this uh, project for you. And I'd like to thank Professor Amar Bishlawi really to invite me. I, w I, wonder, I was wondering if I have place in the thalassemia study or <laughs> conference or not. But I, you know, when I went through our project, I was very happy to find that we have a lot of areas that we can work together in. So as you will see from this study, it's called crash to trial. It's canker randomization of anti-fibrinolytic significant trauma hemorrhage. So we're speaking about traumatic patients mainly. This was the original part of our work. This was actually a multi-center, multinational, one of the largest in the history of medicine. That's why I was very happy that we were part of this work. Actually, we had three hospitals were included in this work, Suez Canal University, and we were very happy that we had with us the Ministry of Health people. And I think they were even recruiting better than us. And this is encouraging that we have to work with the Ministry of Health more, because most of the time we are thinking that we are the only researcher, which is not true. We have really the Materia Teaching Hospital and the Aswan Teaching Hospital. So, so we were actually three hospitals doing this piece of work. So with in, in uh, I mean, approximately four million cases of this is from hemorrhage or actually this from trauma actually happen every year. And I think if you look at them, mainly road traffic injuries, and we are leading the world in road traffic injuries. When you look to the last one, which is war, war, we are really in a very turmoil area. So I think we can add another half a million for this number, which is showing that hemorrhage is a big problem. When we spoke about hemophilia, again, hemorrhage is a big problem. So when we look at that, what is the cause of death in most of these cases? It's more than 45% of these cases were due to bleeding, which is showing that bleeding, again, is the main health you know, problem in our case. So what to do? So this was, ah, so in coagulation occurs rapidly at the site of hemorrhage, damaged blood vessels, and then we have another system, which is a fibrinolytic system that removes fibrin, fibrin from the site of the injury to keep our blood vessels permanent and working. So we have these two systems working at the same time in a very delicate balance between coagulation and fibrinolysis. Okay. So, Activators of plasminogen uh, from the injured blood vessel transfer plasminogen into plasmin. And plasmin binds to fibrin via its lysine sites and causes fibrinolysis. So this is the mechanism. So what to do? So as we said, we have bleeding and fibrinolysis at the same time, which are, they look like they are contradicting each other. Okay. So we found that we have a substance called tranexamic acid. It is present in the market now for more than 40 years. And it was used by gynecologists for postpartum hemorrhage. And some others locally 
like dentists, they use it locally. So it means we have already a drug that is used for a very long time. This is synthetic derivative of the amino acid lysine, okay, which has a very high affinity for this plasminogen lysine sites. We have actually five sites, so it is competing now with uh, plasmin for it, which is we found that it really blocks these sites and can be very useful as an anti-fibrinolytic substance. So this was the main story behind why we started this sort of study. The study is a randomized placebo controlled trial. So we have tranexamic acid in one limb and we have the placebo in the other to determine the effect of this antifibrinolytic substance on death and vascular events. Because most of the time we are worried, as we were speaking, I mean, the, the first speaker, that we are always worried about vasoagulosive you know, problems with most of our medications used. So this, those were the main points that we were discussing, okay? So who are the patients? Actually, we included patients in the first eight hours after trauma. And they were all adults because we couldn't really, you know, break it to use a smaller dose for younger children. So this was the main. And then we have a those either patients with significant hemorrhage or patients at risk of significant hemorrhage, like road traffic injury people, people falling from height. So those were the inclusion criteria. So have we included all patients? We cannot do that because actually we depended on the decision of the doctor. So if the doctor will feel that there is need to use tranexamic acid, or he was feeling that it is a contraindication to use it, those are ineligible for a study. We only included doctors who are substantially uncertain either to use cyanoxamic acid or not, okay? And then we do this randomization. It was quite an interesting randomization because it was, we call it triple blinding, okay? Nobody was knowing anything, which drug is used and which other drug. And if you want to know about it, I can tell you later on. And it was a, what you call permuted block randomization because it was done in, a, for, in about 274 centers all over the world. So we need something which is feasible and possible to do in the field. Where actually we have what we were doing. We got the patient and we give a loading dose of one gram of tranexamic acid in 10 minutes. And then we have another maintenance dose, another gram, which were given for eight hours. So though this was a simple regimen done for those patients. Our primary outcome. I think why we have this very large sample size? Because our primary outcome was a very hard outcome. Is there is death or not? Which is one, that's why we needed to get a very large study sample to the, because this was our primary outcome. Does it really affect this or not? Secondly, we have another group like blood product transfusion. And I think everybody now is speaking about the problems of blood transfusion. Dr. Alayla was with us in this smile and <laughs> giving us about immunological problems of blood transfusion. Now we are speaking about HIV, HCV, just name it. So I think this is one problem. Surgical intervention, do we have or do we need more or less surgical intervention? If there is, I think the main problem which we were very worried about, which is non-fatal vascular occlusion, because this is one which we're always worried about. And then dependency. And why dependency? Why? Why we're looking for dependency? If we'll have an improvement in mortality, we always look for, are we really saving people who will be dependent, as sometimes we had a problem in prematures and all that. So we need to look for that. Okay, so our study population, actually it was 20,211 patients from 274 hospitals in 40 countries. In Egypt, 
we recruited more than 2,200 patients, which is more than 10% of the total sample size, which is showing only three hospitals. Actually, we approach it, Cairo University approaches <laughs> Ain Shams, they were not very happy, you know, but it, it was just very cumbersome. You have to be, to follow very strict regulations, you have to re have a lot of auditing all through, and I think we are always very hesitant when we are doing that in a very large scale. So we have that, and as I said, in these three hospitals. These are stars all over the world. Maybe United States, at that time they had, I think, Obama, no problem. <laughs> so, but now with Putin, I think he may be, or what is his name? <laughs> Trump. He may even join because, you know. Anyway, we didn't have USA and Russia, but the rest of the world, including China, India, others, the whole world, at least 60% or 70% of the whole uh, population of the world were included in this work. So the trial went, as I said, 20,000 patients in two limbs, 10,000 in each limb. As I said, permuted block means we always give every center a box included eight uh, cachets or eight uh, kits, and each kit including everything. But we have only an ID for it, so we don't know if it is tranexamic acid or placebo. So that's why we actually, this came because we were actually part of the design group of this work. So as you see, there is actually no dropouts. We, more than 99.7% in each limb were, uh, you know, were included in the last part. What were the areas we were looking for? Age, gender, time since birth, because I think this was, and as you will see later on, how it's very important. Type of injury, blunt or penetrating, and clinical condition. I'm getting too much? Okay, two minutes, come on. Baseline characteristics, it was mainly males. Age was divided between this older group. Time since injury, most of them, again, one third in each group of these type of injury. So what is the study results? We found that there is a reduction in death statistically significant in all these. But the rest, like vaso-occlusive uh, um, multi-organ failure or head injury, they were not really significant between these two groups. And as you see here, this is very clear, 15% reduction in the number of uh, deaths due to vaso-occlusive sorry, due to hemorrhage. So what is the timing? Because this was very important. So when we look to the timing, we found that patients who were given the treatment in the first hour were doing very well. And when we gave it up between one to three hours, it was still very good. But if we give the treatment after three hours, it is harmful as you see. So we have to give it very early, either one to three hours, and this, after three hours, it could be harmful. And this is one of the points. Second, do we need to, do, to give blood transfusion more? As you see, it was not really significant. Surgery, there is no difference in surgery between these two groups. Death and dependence, and this was the area which we were always worried about. Are we going to end with more dependency? As you see here, no symptoms. This was significantly in favor of tranexamic acid, which shows it's pretty safe to give it. But the rest, minor symptoms, some, and we're using actually the modified Oxford disability score, which were showing that we don't have an increase in the disability in our patients, okay? Vascular occlusive, and this was the main side effects we were very worried about. Surprisingly, there was no difference between these two groups. And surprisingly that uh, DVT, pulmonary embolism, myocardial infarction, but even stroke was less among tranexamic acid group 
which was for us, we, we couldn't know why, what is the explanation, but I think this was a very important finding that we have to look for. So in conclusion, tranexamic acid safely reduced the risk of death in bleeding trauma patients, and there is a new study done, actually finished and published 2014, showing that it is highly cost effective. It is very useful, we can use it. It should be considered for use in trauma patients with either at risk or even those at risk of bleeding. Tranexamic was included now after this study in the WHO list of essential medicines. The last part I think is the more, most interesting. It should be available to all doctors. Is it available in Egypt? We did more than 2200 but unfortunately it's still not available. It is very cost effective and just for your information it is now present in every ambulance in Germany. I, I think Germany is really suffering more than us, okay? So I think we have to do think about that. It might also have a role in bleeding from other conditions. And there was a new study which was conducted and published in 2017 which is uh, that it's showing that it is reducing death and morbidity, hysterectomy, in cases of uh, uh, bleeding or postpartum hemorrhage. The most interesting part, which is the last part, because I was looking to the Cochrane Database System Systematic Review. There was a study done in 2016 looking to its effect from acid in other blood diseases. So there is already working studies and looking to different areas, mainly thrombocytopenia, von Willebrand disease, hemophilia, and acute leukemia, especially patient on therapy. So can we, this could be an area for research. We always look for the very advanced, very expensive one. This is very inexpensive, can be given in any form, either IV if we have an invasive procedure or surgery for our patients, this is number one. You can give it orally as a prophylactic and you can use it locally if you have a local injury. So it is a, a wonderful, when we speak about a magical treatment, this is one of the magical treatments which is cost effective, doesn't have a real complication. So I think this could be one of the areas why we don't think about a multicenter trial using this for either hemophilia patients, thrombocytopenic patients, or leukemia, acute leukemia patients in Egypt to be one of the multicenter trial. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this very interesting uh, lecture.